All right, welcome everybody. I am Will Baker, president of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and we're here today to announce a historic agreement between the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, somebody's ears just blew up, between the Chesapeake Bay Foundation and the Environmental Protection Agency. This agreement is a game changer. This agreement is going to lead to pollution reduction in the Chesapeake Bay, and if it doesn't, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation will be back in court. Let me introduce uh, everyone who's here. Uh, from my left, going across, John Mueller, who's CBF's litigation vice president, Bernie Fowler, former Maryland state senator, and the known for uh, wading into the Patuxent River for year after year after year to see if he can see his white sneakers, the Bernie Fowler Index. Bob Perciusepi, Deputy Administrator of EPA, and Bob Sussman, who is uh, Senior Policy Counsel to Lisa Jackson. Chuck Fox is here too. Why aren't you sitting up here, Chuck Fox? Come sit up here. Uh, Chuck Fox, also here from EPA, the czar of the Chesapeake Bay. And just right at the outset, our appreciation and thanks to Chuck, to Bob, to Bob, uh, and certainly to Bernie, one of our co-plaintiffs, for working through a long and tedious and very detailed set of legal questions to arrive at this agreement. Did I say we are here for an his announcement of a, a historic agreement for the Chesapeake Bay, a true game changer that's going to lead to pollution reduction? It spells out what EPA will do in detail. It sets deadlines. It has accountability. It will lead to pollution reduction. Let me tell you why we sued EPA. Look at this satellite image right here. Six states and the District of Columbia make up the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Scientists tell us that is the definition of the Chesapeake system. The federal government is the only jurisdiction which has authority to govern the entire Chesapeake Bay system. The states, by definition, stop at their boundaries. We saw in much of the last decade that the federal government was simply not governing, was simply abrogating their responsibilities to manage the system as a whole. The Chesapeake 2000 Agreement was not being enforced. We say EPA was missing in action. So in October of 2008, we issued a 60-day letter to the Bush Administration Environmental Protection Agency. The 60-day period under the Clean Water Act litigation rules is to have time for the parties to work out their differences. EPA did not respond. There was zero response typical to the previous seven years. We were left with no other alternative but to file suit in January of 2009. The tragedy is that CBF had to file suit. The celebration is that EPA is agreeing to a binding agreement with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation to put the bay back on the road to recovery. Tragedy and celebration. We're going to focus on the celebration for the rest of today. I'd like to ask John Mueller to come up and give you the legal background to the settlement. What can we expect going forward? John? As Will mentioned, I think it's important for all of us to kind of keep in mind um, why we sued and, and uh, the outcome we were looking to obtain. Uh, back in 2000, the historic Chesapeake 2000 agreement was signed, and it said that the bay would be restored by 2010. And unfortunately, shortly thereafter, government started to admit that that was not going to be. And I began speaking with folks like Senator Fowler and former Governor Harry Hughes and watermen who spend their lives uh, working on the bay and were suffering from poor water quality and realized that something had to change, that we had to do something different uh, going forward to make sure that bay restoration occurred. And so we joined forces and filed suit to force EPA to act. 
and with the signing of this agreement, it has acted. For the first time in Bay history, EPA, in a legally enforceable document, has said, we are responsible for Bay restoration. We will exercise our authorities to make sure that restoration occurs. We will set specific deadlines for making sure that certain specific actions occur. We will keep a better watch over pollution and enforce uh, the environmental laws. And we will impose consequences if there is failure along the way. And if we fail to do any of these things, you can take us back to court and enforce the terms of this agreement. The agreement specifically details EPA's responsibilities, how it will oversee the states and what consequences it will impose if the states fail to comply. A few examples. EPA will complete the pollution budget process, the Bay TMDL that many of you have heard about, by December 31st of this year. It will require the states to develop implementation plans and propose those plans by November 29th of this year and finalize them by November of next year. EPA will propose new regulations to address stormwater runoff, the only source of pollution in the Bay that continues to grow. Those regulations will be proposed in September 2011 and will be finalized in November of 2012. EPA will also propose regulations to control agricultural runoff. That will occur uh, in June of 2012 and be final by June of 2014. EPA is also committed to prevent new loadings uh, to the tributaries and to the bay by requiring offsets if new loads are proposed or the states fail to adequately allocate uh, their respective uh, loads for nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediments for new, new development. And EPA has identified specific consequences that it will take, uh, actions it will impose on the states if they fail to comply, either by failing to develop the plans on time or by failing to keep uh, up with the deadlines and the two-year milestones that they set. Uh, some of those consequences could be the withholding of federal funds, or the denial of permits for new construction and new development. <coughs> EPA has made other commitments and agreed to date specific milestones, and these are identified in the press package uh, that you've been given today. But overall, transparency has been built into this agreement. There is a tracking system that allows citizens and the Bay uh, Foundation and our co-plaintiffs to check on EPA's progress, to check on the state's progress, and to make certain that they are meeting the milestones and the deadlines they said they will meet. The bottom line is, is that the legally, this is a legally binding agreement that requires mandatory, not voluntary, pollution reductions. And if there is failure, we have preserved the right to go back to court and enforce the terms of the agreement. Thank you. <laughs>